Hello and welcome back. We're going to be talking about sitemaps and we're going to be building our own in Figma. But before we build our own, I want to go through a couple of different things about my process and how we can just get started on the right foot. So what I like to do is I like to grab all those sketches that we created in the beginning and I like to just drop them into my files, wherever they're relevant, of course. So if I'm done sharing them with the team, I'll put them in some sort of folder or a page where I can share. So I'll just click share and copy that link and just drop it into a Slack group or whatever messaging platform we're using. And um, over here, we have all our sketches. So I'm using them in our sitemap file right now, and they're going to help us really figure out the structure of our application. They're going to help us think about maybe some details or details on pages that could really influence the categorization of certain things. So we started with mapping out the overall journey. So I know that we need an onboarding screen. I do know that we need some sort of home screen or this looks like a search results screen that I quickly mocked up. I know that there's going to be some sort of like order screen it says package shipped here and a package arrived. So there's probably maybe another screen that will pop up for the user, but that is probably just conditional. So we're not going to necessarily worry about that kind of stuff just yet. I do know that there's a product page over here as well. And we have a cart. So I know that there's certain areas where I can get to like the cart differently. So I can probably get to the cart from the product description. I haven't necessarily thought about that too, too much, but it is a possibility. Maybe once you add an item, it'll push you into the cart. But mainly, I think we thought about the cart from a navigation standpoint and keeping it there at all times. So we'll probably keep the cart in the navigation and we're going to worry about that when we're talking about actual sitemaps. So it looks like our main, main navigation is like home, save, orders, cart, and there's going to be some extra information on each page that we're also going to break down. So right now we have a home page. It looks like we have some products here. I have like a profile avatar that'll probably allow users to actually act access a profile and maybe account settings. So we'll think about that while we're building our same app. We do have like a saved section. And this save section probably has different items, more similar items, a way into the cart section. What else do we have here? We have a cart. So we've already thought about that a bit. And here I'm already thinking about some of the navigation schemes. So I know a search leads to a product or results that then leads to a product. We have a product that leads right to checkout. We probably have categories down here that we need to think about. We spoke about kind of like those primary, secondary and tertiary levels. So we're gonna think about how far we need to go. Probably not too far. I'm thinking only like secondary. So what do we have here? We have orders. So we probably have an orders page. Okay. And yes, we do have some sort of navigation scheme that we started building out. And what I have here is home description. So what I really want you guys to do is grab all your sketches, digitize them, put them into Figma and use them to really help influence what you're trying to build here. Sometimes people sketch and they forget about the sketch and they start building something entirely different or they start kind of fresh. We don't necessarily want to start fresh. We want to influence the work as we go along based off of our findings. So whatever feedback you got, implement it here. You don't have to necessarily go back and like redo everything. Just keep moving. So we have screen flows and we know that a search will lead to results and a results to description. Okay, so we basically know where we're going with some of these sketches. Now let's review some of our user flows here. So we have registering with our product. We know that there will be like a welcoming or onboarding. I'm not sure what that would look like, but it'll lead into a, a registration flow, which we need to think about, which would push us into the home page. So that's helpful. Over here, we have finding the right product through search. So uh, we've done this already with our sketches. So we this is just more refined. Yeah, that yeah, we've done that. And uh, we have making a purchase. And so we understand the cart. So we have a lot of refined little flows here. And since our application isn't too detailed or complex, we have a good starting off point based off of what we have here. And you'll probably have much more than this. And, uh, you know, you should start thinking about all the different types of flows. But like I said earlier, 
the design process is just constantly evolving. You don't necessarily stop sketching. You don't necessarily stop creating user flows. Everything's always kind of happening simultaneously in a way, especially with sketching and user flows. So don't worry if you don't have too much, you'll figure it out once you start building out the sitemap that, you know, maybe this doesn't necessarily make sense and I need to go back and think about it. So don't be too hard on yourself if you forget something because it definitely will happen, especially once you start talking to more people and getting feedback. So before we begin, I just wanna explain what I have here. And these are a couple of components and you know how much I hate recreating the wheel. These are some components that I kind of took from a resource for uh, sitemaps because if somebody else created it and it's a free resource, I am down to use it because it's gonna make my life easier. And I'll link that original resource for you, but you can use that. You can use what I've created here. I've kind of modified it a bit. It's just what I need at least. So let me just break this down. These are the individual components that we'll be using. And I know I explained sitemaps a little differently in terms of just having a label, but I really like to build sitemaps in a way where I can start understanding the content structure inside. So each page may have their own set of content that will link elsewhere. And you can kind of start merging some sort of sitemap with like a little bit of a flow diagram. I mean, like you don't want to get too complex, but it really helps you think about different types of content that you're going to need on the page. So this kind of stuff will um, be obviously influenced by your sketches and your user flows, and it'll give you a good overview if you have redundant content somewhere, or if you don't have a piece of content that you forgot about, and we'll probably figure that out now. So what do we have here? So I have public components. So this basically means that if a person uses our app and doesn't have an account, this nice shade of blue, if they are a member, they'll only be able to see content that is member-based and we have a login or sign up button, and we have an outside link. I'm not sure we're gonna be using outside links, but it definitely helps to have some variety. And we can obviously create more of these, and if we do option command B, we will essentially detach that instance, and we can recreate our own instance by going option command K, and we can rename it to something else. Okay, so let's just command Z out of that. And in here, this is just the container. So I kind of have it set up similar to what the original file had, which is this nice, cool little browser looking window. It has a title and this is gonna be the title of our page. And we are going to name all these pieces based off of the content. So I will show you what that looks like right when we get into creating a sitemap. 